am way too serious. But that's not true. I just have rules about how I run my life. So back when I was dating, a friend of mine had a rule. He figured, OK, I'll ask a woman out twice. And if she doesn't respond after that, then forget it all the way off. I had the same rule, except my limit was 40. <laughs> I used a trial and error approach to dating. Women would try going up with me and then discover they'd made a big error. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a movie one time. I took a date to a movie and we're sitting there with a huge guy sitting in front of us. She goes, is that, too guy, is that guy too big for you to see? And I said, no, I can make him out just fine. <laughs> I, have, I have rules for being organized. You know, some people organize their lives on index cards. I have an index for my index cards, cross-indexed. Whoa. <laughs> I use the Dewey Decimal System, except my version was inspired by Donald Duck's nephews. So it's the Huey, Dewey, and Louie Decimal System. <laughs> and did you know that that system is 150 years old? So it's actually the Huey, Dewey, and Louie Sesquicentennial Decimal System. <laughs> and if you use it every half year, it's a semi <laughs> I do have hobbies, so some people, uh, you know, I'm serious, but I have hobbies. Some people study basket weaving, some people study yoga, they said like body weaving. I study constitutional amendments. Yes, uh, clause 15, subsection 2, paragraph 1. That's freedom from mind control. I figure, you know, actually, if the aliens ever come, and start controlling our minds, the government will just give us little uh, suicide pills. That won't be a problem for me. I'll just start talking and bore myself to death. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have my funny side. OK, so this is my, this is my serious side. <laughs> Here's my funny side. <laughs> I, I can never understand. I'd go to parties, and no one would talk to me. I'd be standing there. And in fact, in my mind, I'm having a great time in my mind. Just right now, in fact, I'm frolicking in my mind. <laughs> oh, oh, that woman I was frolicking with didn't take too kindly to my suggestion. <laughs> now, one woman, one woman friend, said, Mark, you're so serious. You're the uptight white guy. Can you tell? I got the outfit. Anyway, she said, but I didn't like that. I got furious. I started swearing. I started using four-letter words. I said, gosh darn heck, you associate of mine. <laughs> and, she, and she said, that doesn't scare me. I said, oh, fudgical. And she goes, you're so serious. Do you ever drink? And I said, yes. Milkshakes, orange juice, soda pop. But only the peer type in my mind. <laughs> So I went to the downtown discotheque and I said, give me a, you know, give me a, a what, what is that drink called? <laughs> give me a screwdriver. But hold the vodka. Yes, very dapper of me. She goes, do you ever take drugs? I said, yeah, I took an aspirin once. I had a headache. She goes, no, no, no. Didn't you ever, you know, get lucky and score some pot? I thought, pot, oh yes, luck. Oh, yes, yes, I was the guy who took the cucumber sandwiches to the potluck dinner. Isn't that what she meant? <laughs> <laughs> yes, here's something you'll never see me doing. <laughs> Unless it's a movie of me blowing up a balloon and run backwards. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, don't you have any vices at all? And I said, dancing. She goes, dancing's not a vice. I said, well, the way I do it is. <laughs> right. Yes, I, I, uh, I like to be uh, serious about my health, so I don't drink, I don't even drink coffee. I don't understand this idea of this, you know, foul-tasting hot cup of stuff. You know, you go, to, you go to Starbucks, and they have these strange names for these drinks. I mean, here's one. A grand iced sugar-free vanilla latte with soy milk. That's not a drink, that's a cake recipe. Here's another one. Iced half-calf with strato venti, four-penny sugar-free cinnamon dolce soy skinny latte. 
I figure if you say that with an Italian accent, like those guys from The Godfather when they went to Sicily, it'll sound like this. I said the half gap was struck to Venti for pump and sugar freaks in the month of Chicago. Latte. 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 By the time you order that, you're going to get shot. <laughs> speaking of Sicily, there's the things I think about. Actually, we weren't really speaking of Sicily. It's the kind of thing I think about. Okay, so the Far East, that's China. And the Middle East, that's Israel. So what's the Near East? Is that. Pickering? <laughs> Actually, I went to Pickering one time and, and I got stopped by the police in a ride check. And, you know, they have their most wanted list. I was on the most unwanted list. <laughs> uh, Mr. Elwood, I'm sorry, we made a big mistake. We shouldn't have stopped you. You're free to go. Go study your constitutional amendments. <laughs> and they said, oh, but would you mind just blowing into this breathalyzer? I said, what do you mean? Oh, well, we, we want to recalibrate it back to zero. <laughs> <laughs> People come up to you and they say, you know, are you Jewish? Are you Catholic? They come up to me and they say, are you a Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> I figure I meet the criteria, ex except for that bit about not having sexual relations with a partner before you're married. I broke that rule. And when I did, I thought, well, what's all the fuss about? You need a partner for this? <laughs> And, but now, if you're going to be a Mormon, you also have to be a missionary. And I got in trouble. They all gave me strange looks. I said, well, I want to go and try out the missionary position with that woman over there. I can understand. They gave me strange looks. <laughs> I'm not really religious. But I went down the street, and I saw this, this Christmas crash. And I, I was befuddled. There was a little baby Jesus swaddled. You ever swaddled anything? How do you swaddle something? Anyway, swaddle these little clothes from Bed Bath and Beyond. And and the little animals were sitting there with their big wide eyes, and, like they're gonna get eaten for dinner or something. <laughs> and then there's the three wise men, right? They, they use the original GPS system. Oh look, we found a dead star. I, I don't know if that's how they did their accent, but anyway, <laughs> something like that. And now behind the little baby Jesus in the crash was there's a huge crucifix and Jesus hanging from it. And little Jesus and the big one up there. And I thought, if only little baby Jesus knew what was in store for him. He'd want no part of it at all. You know, what? I'm going to be a carpenter. I'm okay to build the cross. But you want me to haul that thing across town with people pelting stuff at me and calling me names in rush hour traffic? <laughs> oh, we're a hat. No. I, I wear thorns, you gotta be kidding. Oh, and the night before I gotta throw a dinner party for 12 guys? Who does that? I don't even know how to cook. I'm gonna have to, someone's gonna have to pull off a miracle. Oh, well, that's me, I'm the miracle guy. No, I figured Jesus would have want no part of that at all. He'd say, forget it, I'm out of here. I'm going as far away as I can. I'm gonna go to the far west. Pickering, maybe. <laughs> Thanks,